show segment this morning is our very own, the great Mayor John Giles. Thank you. You surprised me because I'm not really supposed to be John. I think I'm. I'm. I'm always here as playing the role of somebody else. And today, I'm playing the role of Scott Smith, who couldn't be here, who's the director of Valley Metro, to talk about the opening of the next extension of the uh, the light rail into Mesa. So excited to be here playing the role of Scott Smith today. All right. So uh, Scott, I mean John. Yes. Or, or Scott or John. We'll we'll go with Mayor Giles. Light rail. Yes. Tell us what's happening there here in Mesa. Well, uh, let's kind of take it back, you know, a few years. I think all of us were, were when, when we, the, the city made the decision to be a light rail city. This was, uh, I, mean, I was on our city council many, many years ago, back in the 1990s, and when we began this discussion. And I remember back then being somewhat skeptical as, as to whether or not this was really a good idea. I mean, the fact that we're kind of in this western states, urban sprawl environment, having a, a fixed rail transit system is that... Does that make sense? And so I remember being somewhat pessimistic that we, about the, whether or not this was wise to do. Uh, and I can't tell you how, how pleased I am to have been wrong in being skeptical about whether or not this is a good idea. Uh, light rail uh, in uh, the Mesa, Tempe, Phoenix area has exceeded all expectations in terms of, of ridership, the number of people that are, are taking advantage of it, particularly seniors and, and, and millennials and folks who aren't necessarily you know, traditionally tied to uh, owning a car or driving it every day. So it, it, it has been successful as a transportation model. It's, it's been even, I would argue, more successful as an economic development model. The, the tremendous investment we've seen in our communities all along the light rail corridor is measured in, in the billions of dollars. So um, in 2008, light rail came to Mesa, Arizona, out at the Sycamore Station, and for years, that was the busiest location anywhere along the light rail route. And it came into Mesa by what, a, a mile and a half, two miles, something like that? Just like a quarter mile, in, quarter barely mile. into Mesa. Right? Sycamore is pretty much Dobson. So it was just, you know, uh, sticking its toe in the water of Mesa, pretty much. Uh, and then in 2015, we had the extension that came all the way to Mesa Drive, giving us four miles into our community. Uh, that, again, has brought, and now, now, in terms of an economic development model, let, let's think about what was the impact in downtown Mesa. Uh, I was born and raised in, in downtown Mesa, no exaggeration. Uh, and for the 30, so I'm, I'm kind of interested in, in seeing that, that part of our, our city do well. For the 30 years prior to the arrival of, of light rail in downtown Mesa in 2015, there were zero residential building permits issued in the downtown area. That's kind of shocking, but it's actually true. Zero. Zero. And uh, because the, the neighbor, you know, that part of Mesa was between uh, shopping malls, Tri-City Mall, Fiesta Mall, the U.S. 63-way. All right, all right, real the, quickly. How many people in the audience remember Tri-City Mall? Raise your hand. <laughs> yeah, that's like a blast of the past, right? Just uh, sometimes, just to, you know, think about Tri-City Mall, I, I hang fishing wire from the, my roof and put drops of uh, syrup on it just to watch it. That's a very much an inside joke for those of you who remember <laughs> Tri-City Mall. Anyway, uh, so uh, since the arrival of light rail in downtown Mesa, we've the, either in construction or in development, we have over 1,200 housing units, $500 million of investment in just residential development in downtown Mesa uh, since 2015. Say that number again. Uh, $500 million in investment in residential properties 1,200 housing units. See, I, I like it. A half a billion dollars. Right. Yeah. So, so uh, the good news is that people, again, are living and working and playing in downtown Mesa. So the real reason I'm here, that's a long story to tell you why I'm here. This sat in, uh, a week from tomorrow, May the 18th, we are opening the next two-mile segment from Mesa Drive out to Gilbert Road. Uh, and the Gilbert Road light rail extension, the Gilbert Road park and ride, is going to be a major uh, facility in our city you know, in perpetuity. What, what taking the light rail out to Gilbert Road does, it really brings transit and the light rail and, and the opportunity to park your vehicle and, and uh, either hatch, catch a ride into work or into a show or to a sporting event uh, to a, a, a larger group of people in Mesa. A lot of us, uh, a lot of residential neighborhoods are in that part of Mesa. <clears throat> and so I think it will introduce a lot, a lot of people will think, well, geez, 
that's really somewhat convenient for me. I can either uh, take an Uber or, or park my car in, in the park and ride, uh, and on a daily basis, I can see this being a part of my life. So the, the great thing about the Gilbert Road Park and Ride is also a huge bus terminal. So it's very much a, a multimodal uh, transit location. So that, that's where the buses are going to come. That's where the light rail is going to come. A huge park and ride, like I mentioned earlier. Lots of facilities for bicycles. Uh, so we're kind of hoping that it will be a game changer in terms of uh, getting people who maybe heretofore haven't felt like light rail or transit was something that they could easily incorporate into their lives. They might reconsider that. So one of the promises when Light Rail was being rolled out was this notion that it's also an economic development tool. Can you tell us about some of the successes Mesa's seen? You bet. Well, in addition to the residential developments that we've talked about earlier, uh, it, it certainly has been an incentive for uh, other types of economic development. Uh, we are excited that uh, later this year we will be breaking ground on a new ASU facility in downtown Mesa. Uh, and I really think that's going to be... <laughs> The most innovative school in the country, right? Four years running, most Four innovative university uh, in, in the world. So, uh, and when, when the first time that I remember we sat down with ASU and we talked about this, they said, let's make something perfectly clear. We love Mesa, we're excited to come to Mesa and, and help Mesa's economy and help educate people in Mesa. But just so you know, if you didn't have the light rail, we wouldn't be having this meeting. Uh, because the, it is such a, a draw, it is such an asset for uh, bringing people and, uh, and uh, institutions like ASU to, to, into, our, into the heart of our downtown. So that will certainly have an economic ripple effect. It'll have a, a, a game, game changer in that for generations from now, we're going to have a lot of bright young people and university professors walking in and out of our, of our facilities. You know, this, this is really big because I'm, I think you read the book uh, The World is Flat by Richard Florida that really talks about the communities that thrive of the future are going to be the ones that can attract that young creative talent. So Absolutely. this is a, a very strategic move on your part. You bet. Well, I, I think what we're all, uh, Mesa is doing very well right now, but I think the biggest threat we have is that we get somewhat complacent and we stop trying to be progressive and innovative and what we don't want is for Mesa to turn into that city where that you come back and visit grandma and grandpa. We want it to be the city where people are, are attracted to, they're moving to, they're staying because there's great jobs, great businesses going on. So uh, ASU will, will certainly be that. Uh, Cahoots is a great co-working space that's coming to downtown Mesa. Uh, it's going to be on the Benedictine University campus, just you know the next block over. So uh, again, the light rail uh, is, a, is a game changer because it brings a lot of folks that like a more urban lifestyle, a more uh, dense living environment, a more uh, dense uh, entertainment environment into our downtown. Now you've got a celebration planned coming yes. up, uh, yes. what, next Saturday? Yes, it's May the 18th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. There'll be lots, of, I think we've all kind of driven by Gilbert and Maine and seen this kind of green big M and wondered what is that all about? Well, uh, it's for you to decide what the M stands for. It might be Mesa, might be Valley Metro, might be, you know, you can fill in the blank, uh, whatever you want it to be. Uh, but there is some great public art, you know, it, that you've seen along the light rail stations. There's this uh, interesting figure that sits atop the, uh, the light rail station at Gilbert Road that I think everyone's going to get a kick out of. So again, the, the party is uh, May 18th from 9 to 12. Uh, about 10 o'clock is when the first train will arrive, about 9.15 if you want to hear the fascinating speakers that will be there. Uh, would it certainly... <laughs> You don't want to miss that. You, you'll be speaking, right? I'm not sure who they're going yeah. to be. But <laughs> That's what I heard. A lot of big celebrities, I think, will be there. Uh, and also, you get free light rail rides that day. So uh, if you want to give it a try, you know, the Diamondbacks are playing later that day against the, the, the Giants. It's Randy Johnson bobblehead day, by the way. So come and get a free light rail pass and go uh, watch the Diamondbacks play. See, I've got six children, so I've always got to economize. And this is like a free amusement ride. We're going to be there. Go. Yeah, There you go. <laughs> you'll be dad of the year if you do it. Awesome. Well, let's give it up for the great, uh, great mayor of Mason, Mason, Mayor John Giles. My pleasure.